I have in my possession a secret map by the planners of the new world order. Because the global order is changing again. A new world order. As Turkey considers military cooperation with Russia, the United States is said to move nukes out of Turkey. Over the past month, ever since the failed Turkish coup, there has been a dramatic and surprising deterioration in that of Turkey with various European states, most notably Austria and Germany, as well as with the United States and NATO in general. This was confirmed once again earlier today when Turkish foreign minister lashed out at NATO in an interview with Sputnik, which is out of Russia, state-run media out of Russia there, saying the alliance is not fully cooperating with Ankara. More importantly, he hinted that Turkey would consider military cooperation with Russia. In the interview, the Turkish foreign minister said that Ankara has become alarmed at the lack of willingness shown by NATO to cooperate with Turkey, which is a member of the alliance. It seems to us that NATO members behave in an evasive fashion on issues such as the exchange of technology and joint investments. Turkey intends to develop its own defense ministry and strengthen its defense system, he said. So with Turkey being Gomer of Ezekiel chapter 38 and Persia being Iran, look at this. Russia and Iran challenge the United States. Russia defends using Iran base for Syria air raids. Russia spurning U.S. censure launches second day of Syria strikes from Iran. And on top of that, Red China sides with Russia in Syrian war will provide military training to Assad. So now we have China officially siding with Russia in the Syrian war, which you could have predicted. They always side with Russia. So you have here a confederacy formulating. You can read of it in Psalm 83, where it even mentions Syria there as well as well as Ezekiel chapter 38. You have a confederacy between Esau and Ishmael. And remember in the book of Genesis, Esau even married one of the daughters of Ishmael. It started all the way back then, and that looks forward to the end prophetically. And ultimately, at the end of the five-month-long hour of temptation, the battle of the Valley of Hamangog will transpire, as you can read of in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. That's where Russia and his confederacy, including the Islamic nations, the anti-Christian nations is what we're talking about here. As you can see for yourself in Ezekiel 38 and 39, they come into the mountains of Israel. And where did the tribe scatter to? Over to the Americas. And who is the A number one enemy of Russia? It's the United States because Jacob was Esau's brother. Whenever Esau and Jacob's mother was pregnant with them because they were twins, they struggled even in the womb. They fought together even in their mother's womb. And she even asked God, why am I thus? As you can read of in Genesis chapter 25. And God's response was, two nations are in your womb. Speaking of Jacob and Esau, the king of the north is Esau, Russia that is to say, along with his confederacy with Ishmael, the Islamic nations, and the king of the south of Daniel chapter 11 is Jacob, the Christian nations. So that's what you got going on here, and it will end up with Edom being destroyed from being a nation. Edom means red in the world headquarters of communism, believe it or not, is Red Square Moscow. Remember we saw the hammer and sickle on their very parliament building the other day? How many of you noticed that? I didn't until just the other day. Right there, hidden in plain view. Why wouldn't they take down the hammer and sickle if they're no longer communistic? Because they are still communistic. Their parliament itself includes the Communist Party of the Federation of Russia. So there you have it. It's plain as can be if you just take the time to investigate and look into the Word of God because Christ foretold us all things, including how the end shall be. It will end with the woe of the fifth trumpet, which is that one world political system. And you'll have Jacob and Esau as well as Ishmael in that one world system, along with the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties and Daniel's fourth beast. So that's why we're not in the one world peace system yet, the one world political system, that is to say, because Satan and his angels must first be cast from heaven to the earth, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 12, before that one world political system emerges, having seven heads and ten horns, as it's written in Revelation chapter 13. The lion, the bear, and the leopard, that's 
Jacob, the Christian nations, the bear being Esau and his confederacy with Ishmael. The bear is symbolic of that. And then you have the leopard, which is the infrastructure of this one world political system, education, economics, politics, and religion, the four hidden dynasties managed by the Kenites, Satan's own children. And then last but not least, you have Daniel's fourth beast, the one with the ten horns. It's exclusively supernatural, and it includes the fallen angels, which are that locust army of Revelation chapter 9. This one world political system will receive a deadly wound, and that's why it says in Revelation chapter 9, in verse 12, right after it tells you it's going to be for a five month period, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now, how is that woe past if Christ hasn't returned yet? Because the woe of the fifth trumpet is that one world political system, and it's wounded to death just before Satan appears at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. Because if you go on to read the next verse, and the sixth angel sounded, and there you have Satan's appearance as the false Christ in Jerusalem. And then it goes from being a one world political system to a one world religious system. So that's why one woe is passed at that point in the middle of the five month long hour of temptation, because the woe of the fifth trumpet was the one world political system, and the woe of the sixth trumpet is the one world religious system because that's when Satan appears as the false Christ. The third and final woe is whenever the true Christ returns, and that's when Esau is destroyed from being a nation in the Battle of the Valley of Haman Gog with those hailstones, and at the same exact time you have the Battle of Armageddon, two different battles in two different geographic locations. The Battle of Armageddon is over where Jerusalem is, geographically speaking, and that's when Satan's role of Antichrist, the false prophet, that is to say, and his one world system, including his fallen angels, Daniel's fourth beast, in other words, are destroyed in the lake of fire, with Satan being imprisoned for the thousand years, being let loose for a short season after the thousand years are finished, and whoever follows him then is cast into the lake of fire as well and blotted out of existence. So Ezekiel 38 is formulating at this time, but it doesn't actually happen, Ezekiel 38 and 39, that is to say, until at the end of the five-month period, as you can read for yourself in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Psalm 83, and Revelation chapter 19, as well as Revelation chapter 16, where you see the seventh vial. That's when the true Christ returns, and you see those hailstones written of there as well. And again, U.S. moves nuclear weapons from Turkey to Romania. This is off of youraktiv.com, and it was also in the Zero Hedge article that we read a moment ago. Two independent sources told youraktiv.com that the U.S. has started transferring nuclear weapons stationed in Turkey to Romania against the background of worsening relations between Washington and Ankara. And then you go to this RT article, Turkey considering military ties with Russia as NATO shows unwillingness to cooperate. And again, Russia and Iran, that's Persia. Turkey is Gomer of Ezekiel 38. Russia and Iran challenge the United States. Russia is Gog in Ezekiel 38, the leader of this communistic Islamic anti-Christian confederacy. Russia defends using Iran base for Syria air raids. Russia spurning U.S. censure launches second day of Syria attacks from Iran. There you have it. It's happening before your very eyes, but you want to get your facts straight and understand what happens when. Again, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is not completely fulfilled until the end of the five-month period. You have to have a one-world political system first, and it has to be wounded to death. And then you have the second woe, the woe of the sixth trumpet. Satan appears as the false Christ. Most of the world whores after him, thinking he's the Prince of Peace return, the true Christ, but he isn't. He's the false Christ. The true Christ will not return until the seventh trumpet, which is at the end of that five-month-long hour of temptation. And that's where those hailstones come into it, destroying Esau from being a nation, destroying the Islamic religion, as well as all false religions. Only Christianity remains, which is not a religion but a reality, and again, Satan's one world system will be completely destroyed forever at that time. It's the equivalent of Daniel chapter 2, where you see that stone destroy that statue that's written of in Daniel chapter 2. That's the one world system. Christ is that stone. The true rock, the true Christ, our sure foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ, returns at that time 
all will be changed into spiritual bodies at that time, and there will be no more New World Order ever again. Only the kingdom of Christ will remain at that time, with the full Godhead returning at the end of the day of the Lord, at the end of that thousand years, and that's when the great white throne judgment transpires, and that's when it's decided who's going into the lake of fire to be blotted out of existence forever and ever, and who's going into the eternity, that is to say the third world age. So as Christ said in the last verse of Mark chapter 13, watch. Let me warn you, a new world order. And let me warn the nation, a new world order. Let me warn you, a new world order.